Tsunami Studios. Immortal She-Hulk, the one shot that I think a lot of people were very excited for because finally Al Ewing was going to be touching Bruce Banner's cousin in his Immortal Hulk run. And I gotta say, I've been very pumped for this issue. I remember reading Empire and just being like, okay, I see what we're doing here. We're setting up for something big. Maybe we're gonna see some big reveals of She-Hulk, something cool happening with her. And for the most part, I think this issue did enough to suffice me. I was a little let down in some angles of it, mainly because I expected we'd be going to some more interesting places than where we went. But overall, it's a nice recap if you are just starting out to read comics and you kind of want to know a little bit more about the character of Jennifer Walters and how she relates to the Bruce Banner character, how she relates to the Hulk mythos. This is a good way to start. I will say, if you were like me and expecting this to be the huge retcon to take She-Hulk in a bold new direction, you're not going to get that. Which, I mean, I can live with for the most part. I still would have liked to see her go into her more classic direction, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. The TV show will definitely change some things with this character. But we'll get into this issue, and I'll, I want to hear what you guys think about this at the end. Like, what are your opinions on this issue? Because to me, it's kind of... It kind of let me down, but I'm also like, I get what it's doing here. So I can't fault it for doing that. So the issue starts with some narration from Jennifer Walters, and it's just kind of like a recapping of what happens with her when she's first originally shot, and she is on the verge of dying. This is where Bruce Banner gives her some of his blood, and this is the kind of birth of She-Hulk. So we get that in a new setting. We also see that as kind of her first inclination as to seeing the green door, but she doesn't really know what it is. She just kind of sees it at this moment, which is kind of, I don't know if you'd say that's a retcon, but it's just kind of a new addition to her origin where she was already aware of its existence, but didn't know what it was or it was just something she saw. Cut to the modern day where she is fighting Tantrum, who is a villain I don't know a lot about. But during the fight, she encounters Wolverine, and the two of them have a nice little moment where they're just talking inside a bar after the fight. And she asks Logan all about what is it to be immortal, what is being dead like, and it just comes to this nice realization that Logan says none of it really matters. It's all just kind of there. You'll die or you won't, and you shouldn't really think about it because it could change you in some severe ways, which is kind of an interesting moment for Logan just because of everything he's been going through on Krakoa and that kind of stuff. I'm just like... I could see how Logan's perception is like that, but the guy also fought in some wars, so I'd imagine he'd be a little different or interested in other things. But it's nice, and I, I like seeing Logan in this. He's definitely an interesting character to see in there. Really good to see him. And then it just kind of becomes this idea that Jennifer's wondering what it all means to die if she keeps coming back because she kind of died before that. Then we get a flashback to the second time, or the main time she died in continuity which is Civil War 2, if I'm not mistaken, a storyline I never read. This is where Carol Danvers and Tony Stark got into a fight because Civil War the movie was coming out. And it's a weird moment because Jen dies, she's lying in her bed, she kind of just wakes up abruptly, and she's now in the like hell version of life, and she encounters her uncle, Brian. And this kind of we get another flashback here where it's just kind of she remembers the day she found out that her aunt was killed by brian and kind of like how does that affect bruce and then we see in the present in the kind of present day when she's in hell talking to her uncle it's like you you got bruce's blood in you you were touched by this this is your destiny too kind of stuff and eventually she does decide to walk through the green door and come back to the land of the living where she is ultimately changed kind of in a way that bruce was changed when he came back around this time too you know where they become these different personas from what you're expecting the personas that we're dealing with now which i'm like that's really fun it's it's good enough to know that al is paying attention to some of the stuff with she hulk that being said i don't like it <laughs> like i think killing she hulk in civil war 2 was obviously just a thing where someone said we have to kill someone and then ultimately we brought it back I just don't like it that she died there. And then now she's coming back. She, this is my least favorite version of She-Hulk is the modern version. The one we have been seeing in uh, Jason Aaron's main Avengers run. The current one that we saw in Empire. I don't like this version of She-Hulk. I think it goes against what the character should be and stand for. So we do get another moment where she's talking to Thor. And the it, idea comes up again about like... What does it mean to die? And she kind of realizes now that she's immortal. She's an immortal She-Hulk where she can't die. 
and she keeps coming back in these different places, but Thor's the one who's like, no, that's a bunch of horse shit, because Galactus was an all-powerful immortal guy from a previous universe, but I killed him, and he's not coming back. Great reference to the Thor run currently going on. I liked that a lot, and you just realize, we got some different ideas here about what people think, and even Jen says it later, she's like, Logan's like, none of it matters, Thor's like, all immortals die eventually, so there's some real just interesting ideas here about what it means to live forever, or what it means to die, I think that's really cool stuff. That was what I liked more about this issue than actually the stuff with She-Hulk, just because it was like, I get it, I know what you're doing here, you're not changing the character. And it's kind of annoying. So then we cut to the Empire stuff where she's getting taken over by the Katati and Swordsman's there. She dies that time. And that time when she goes down to the Hellscape, she sees the leader. And the leader is all crazy. He's got his big head like we've seen in recent issues of Immortal Hulk. And he's just kind of telling her like, oh, you're another thing. Like, you are destined. You are a part of this. You and Bruce are different than the rest of them. You are these powerful people. And it's just, okay. I see what you're doing, it's kind of fun, kind of interesting, but at the same time, I I don't know, like, I, I wish some more happened with She-Hulk in this, in this book, but I get what happened, so we get, I think, a red door, or a red card introduced by the leader here, which we saw him working on in the, ne the previous issue of Immortal Hulk, and this is kind of where he takes control again, and this, I guess, neuralizes the green door to the point where you can no longer return from it, so the next time Jennifer Walters will die, she will be dead permanently, is kind of the idea here. It's cool, but it doesn't change the character in the way I think a lot of people wanted. It's going to leave you wishing more things happened in this. Like I said, if you haven't read the character before, it's a really interesting place to start because it modernizes her stories, where we get the Green Door involved, which is a lot of people like about Hulk right now. It's a good way to introduce her to the larger Marvel Universe, because you're like, here she is with Logan, here she is with Thor, here she is with just in the Marvel Universe. You can see where she's been for the past little while, but it's not going to be this big and bold idea, which I think a lot of people were hoping for, me included. I really wanted this to be a grand adios thing, where it's just like, here she is in part of the Immortal Hulk run. You know, here's her big breakout. But it's not. It's just we're seeing the times she's died, how it's connected to the green door, and she still it doesn't feel like she's going to play a larger part in the Immortal Hulk storyline, but this just was a nice way just to kind of throw her into that universe and just see maybe she'll come back near the end of this, the book and do something. I don't know. It didn't give her normal talking sexy Hulk abilities or what she, we've known from her for a long time. Which is fine, we'll just probably get that closer to the time the television show releases. But as it stands, I can't say this was a lot of fun. I did understand what it was doing, but again, this isn't my She-Hulk, it's not for me. And I expected something else, which is doesn't mean it's bad, it just means my expectations weren't met. So, Immortal She-Hulk, I am going to give a 6 out of 10. Now thank you guys so much for watching this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and as always you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video, have fun, stay safe, good luck.